want to say something about that? <clears throat> sure. Um, and I spent most of my field work in mud huts working on uh, techniques of agriculture that were considered pre-capitalist. But in fact, they were ecologically sustainable, had been for thousands of years. That's what's been blown away by petro-intensive agriculture. I'm glad to hear, Mr. Williams, that you're engaged in sustainable agriculture because in most cases, we aren't in America. We have an absolutely unsustainable system in America, and I fear, through the international agencies, we're promoting that abroad. We're <coughs> moving from a, what used to be a solar sustainable system to a petro-intensive system to such an extent that nine calories out of every 10 that you're consuming are subsidized by fossil fuels. If you try and test that out, you can go into any local organic store here and buy some carrots. See where they're grown. They're grown on irrigated land in California, put in a truck, refrigerated truck, and transported for 3,000 miles to this part of the country. Now, the ecological cost of that carrot, even if it's organic, is absolutely irrational. It has nothing to do with the ecological price that we're paying collectively for the disaster involved in it. Now, to move to a solar sustainable agriculture will not be trivial, especially because of the crisis of population growth. What's happening now, and you're seeing it as a drum roll around the world, we've got to come up with more and more food for more and more people in less and less time on smaller and smaller acreage. What's the answer? They have it for you already, the corporate world. Let's move from the green revolution to the gene revolution, right? We can bugger the genes and have them produce twice as much on the same area unit. Look at the energetics of that. That is, how much energy is poured into it as opposed to how much comes out in the calories that you eat. It's a sink. It has been proved again and again in human history that cultures that get into an energy sink, whether it's the Roman Empire and the Carthaginians or anyone else since, that puts more energy in extracting the food than there is in the food itself is caught in a gurgle, an energy sink that is going down fast. So agriculture could be properly conceived our one big hope in sequestering carbon. Because what do plants do? They take CO2 out of the air, right? Try to keep that carbon in the ground, underground, plow it back, get soils to absorb carbon, not release it now as trucks and tractors and fertilizer and everything else is uh, produced on top of them, killing the life of the soil and releasing both CO2 and methane, right? If you look at the structure of meat production in any country in the world, it's a net carbon emitter, right? So you are on to the biggest hope we've got as a collectivity, moving from petro-intensive agriculture toward a solar sustainable agriculture. It's only been 70 years since we moved it from solar sustainable to petro-intensive. And we gave the guy a Nobel Prize who did it, right? Norman Borlaug got the Nobel Prize for the Green Revolution. What's the Green Revolution? It's a massive subsidy of fossil fuels into a natural ecosystemic process of capturing carbon and it's turned it itself into a release of carbon. Big mistake. He got a Nobel Prize for it. There are a lot of big mistakes like that, including nuclear down the, down the way as well. So. Don't get distracted from the issue, which is to take carbon out of the atmosphere, keep it underground, join the carbon underground, get on to the, the, there are no institutions teaching this, by the way. You have to, in effect, construct your own university at this point, and you can do it, because most of you can speak English pretty well. Fortunately, for reasons having to do with the, the legacy of the British Empire of the 19th century, that is the language where you can exchange these things. Even in China, I'm teaching now online courses to Shanghai, Beijing, and Hong Kong on a regular basis because we're reaching over all institutions, all <laughs> accredited universities and the like, all nationalities because they know English in China.
move toward solar sustainable agriculture. You're on the right track. Thank you, Tim.